We are excited to have another day in which we are blessed to go through the word and make a difference between the truth and superstition. Yes, we are blessed. Yes, we are excited. Okay. And I want to close this topic. Now, I studied the Bible, and I've come to the conclusion that there is not one single scripture in the entirety of the Bible, excluding the Apocrypha, which was written in the second century, that God Almighty said that Jesus is going to die for your sins. You can only go to Isaiah 53, in which Isaiah 53 is commonly known amongst Jews and hasn't changed that that is speaking of the entire nation of Israel as a whole, being the suffering servant, okay? So they don't believe it's speaking of an individual. So Isaiah 53 is not that clear. It's not. And the Bible says, let everything be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. I want to get that scripture real quick. This is going to be the book of Deuteronomy chapter 17 verse 6. This is the reason why I like to have at least two or three scriptures coming from at least two to three different prophets, all agreeing on the same thing that is coming from Moses, because Moses was the chief prophet, and all the other prophets had to stay in line with what Moses said. Let's get that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 6. At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses, shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. But at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. You cannot put to death nobody on the account of one witness. We need at least two witnesses. That is why the Gospels in the letters of Paul are very tricky. Because they both witness against what Moses said. Now, I want you to read 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 10 real quick. So you can see how these two men, which were sons of Baal, represents two false teachers. It represents false teachings, okay, coming from different names. This is going to be 1 Kings 21, 10. This is the book of 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 10. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him, that he may die. All right, so they set up two witnesses to take out Nabal and take his vineyard. Now that is going into two different books. That is both talking about the divinity of Jesus or whatever that is against what Moses has already Established. Now I want another scripture to confirm. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. This is going to be Deuteronomy 19, 15. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 19, verse 15. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin, in any sin that he sinneth. At the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall the matter be established. At the mouth of two or three witnesses. That's why you can't just bring Isaiah to me, okay, and say, oh, yeah, Isaiah 53, that's talking about Jesus. It don't say Jesus, and it don't say Messiah. It don't even say son. It says servant. John the Baptist was a servant. Isaiah was a servant. Cyrus was a servant. Okay, that does not tell me Jesus. That doesn't tell me who the servant is. So therefore, when I look at Bible prophecy, I am looking 
for at least two to three prophets, two to three different authors that are all in agreement with Moses. Now, I'm going to show you how Moses is always established as the prophet that all the other prophets hang on to, okay? Moses comes first. This is going to be Numbers 11, 29. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 29. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake, would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? All right, so here we have Moses mentioned first. Then we have prophets. Now I have Luke 16, 29 on the screen for time's sake. This is the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 29. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Moses first, then the prophets. Let's go to Luke 16, 31. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. All right, so if they don't believe Moses and the prophets, Moses first, okay? Every prophecy has to be aligned with Moses, okay? The Christian has no legs to stand on. The Christians are like the sons of Korah who was swallowed up by the ground. Oh, they went down a lie, okay, into the pit. The Christian doesn't have any legs to stand on talking about Jesus died for their sins because Moses was against human sacrifice. In his last words, he told them that they would corrupt themselves and they provoked the father unto wrath by sending their sons and daughters through the fire, okay? Moses was against human sacrifice. I want another scripture, Luke 24, 27. This is the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Starting off with Moses. Now, these Christians, they bringing up Isaiah. But here we have Jesus bringing up Moses. He's talking about himself in Moses, okay? And we know for a fact there is nothing speaking of him being crucified in Moses, okay? So we know that's going into something else. Now I want Luke 24, 44. Verse 44, and he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. All right, so for the most part, if you go through the Bible, you're going to see Moses first. There are a few scriptures, maybe one or two, that's going to put prophets and Moses. But we know that all the prophets came after Moses, and they all were under his leadership. So they couldn't prophesy anything that would contradict what the head prophet prophesied. I hope that makes sense, and I hope you got that. Now, I want to shift. I want to shift a little bit. Now, I made my conclusion. The last time, thus saith the Lord, is mentioned in the Bible, and I'm going to show you all this, and it's going to shock you all. If you go to your Bible app and you type in, thus saith the Lord. Somebody tell me what that means, thus saith the Lord. The Lord says. That is right. That is very right. Evidently, a lot of people don't care. They don't care if it says, thus saith the Lord or not. Okay? But it's very important whenever it says, thus saith the Lord. That's how you know it's God speaking. And people will literally, I had one person literally chew me out because I wanted a scripture where it said, thus saith the Lord in the beginning of it. 
I want to know that it's coming from God. I don't want it coming from man. In Jeremiah 8, 8, it talks about the pen of the scribes twisting God's word. So what's wrong with wanting a scripture where it says, thus saith the Lord at the beginning. Now, the last time thus saith the Lord is mentioned in the Bible is going to be Malachi chapter 4, verse 3. Okay, this is the last time thus saith the Lord is mentioned. And I'm going to make sure, I'm going to make sure I got the Bible app open and I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling just to make sure because I'll take a thus saith Lord. Yep, it is Malachi chapter 4, verse 3. Somebody get that. This is the book of Malachi chapter 4, verse 3. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. That's the last time the word or the phrase, saith the Lord is mentioned, y'all. Look, it's not mentioned no more. It is not mentioned no more. I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to show y'all. Look at the screen in just a second. It's, it's used in the Apocrypha, okay? But the Apocrypha, 2nd Ezra, is written in Latin, okay? It's written in Latin, and it's in the 2nd century. So it's not Old Testament. It's after Jesus departed. And the Christians shot themselves in the foot because they don't consider the Apocrypha. The Protestants, they don't consider the Apocrypha to be canon, which is genuine scripture. All right. So right there. That's the last time it's mentioned. All these other times is not that. Now, when you go to the Apocrypha, it says, saith the Lord. And Susanna, it says, saith the Lord. Baruch and Esther. But in the New Testament, it's not mentioned at all. Now, that's alarming. That is very alarming. So, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all of them. Paul. None of them ever said, thus saith the Lord. It was never a thus saith the Lord. It was never a God utterance where God spoke like he did with the prophets. When God talked to the prophets, the prophets would say, thus saith the Lord. All that stuff stopped in Malachi. Okay, so you can't find no scripture at all in the Bible where it's going to say, thus saith the Lord. Jesus is going to die for your sins. Now, in the entire Bible, you can't find that phrase. The only thing you can do is go off of Paul, go off the Gospels, go off the New Testament, okay, where man is saying it. And the reason why Christians, they, they believe it because Paul said all scripture is God breathed. And Peter said that every man, when he writes scripture, it's under the power of the Holy Spirit. OK, but that's not God coming on the scene and saying, thus saith the Lord. It's totally different. OK, for one thing, the New Testament is in Greek. It is in Greek. OK, so there's no more Hebrew. Thus saith the Lord. That all stopped in Malachi. So finishing up. I determined that there is no such scripture in the entire Bible where God is saying, I'm going to send my son or the Messiah or Jesus to die for your sins. And for me, if it was in there once, I would want it to be twice and I will at least want three times. And I want it coming from Moses. Then I would believe it. But it ain't nowhere. The closest thing the Christian can go to 
is Isaiah or Genesis 22. Okay, when Isaac was being so-called sacrificed, when he was rescued, and God said, I will provide for myself a lamb. But that's not Pacific, okay? That's talking about another animal, okay? So you can't take little dark sayings and little scriptures and just say, oh, that's Jesus. No, you have to know what you're talking about, which leads me to the scripture. This is going to be Surah 4, 1, 57, and it says, and for their saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, and they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but another was made to resemble him to them. Now, I know a lot of Muslims, okay? They go by another translation, okay? And that is, it was made to appear to them that way. And indeed, those who differ over it are in doubt about it. Now, pay attention, y'all. It says they have no knowledge of it except the following assumption. Wow. And they did not kill him for certain. So they are boldly saying Jesus was not killed. And we can't find no scriptures in the Old Testament of God. Thus saith the Lord saying Jesus is going to die for my sins. The prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, told us that all the Christians and the people of the book has is assumptions. Bible interpretation. There's no scripture in the entire Bible. Where God Almighty, all powerful, says that Jesus is going to die for your sins. And it's so true. The Quran says all they have is assumption. I was blue back. And I read this before. I read this before. But today, when I read this, after doing my study on Jesus didn't die for your sins, it really sunk in. I was like, wow. Now that is a prophet. Okay, because that's all they have is little clues. Okay, that's all they have. They don't have nothing from God Almighty. God quit talking in Malachi. From Matthew all the way to the book of Revelation, there is not one word from no prophet saying, thus saith the Lord. Okay, now that word assumption, okay, it also goes into another word, in some translations bring out conjecture, okay? All they have is conjecture. And conjecture is actually without proof or sufficient evidence. That's what the word conjecture means. It means without proof or sufficient evidence, okay? And if you look at the Webster's Dictionary, it literally reads, inference formed without proof proof or sufficient evidence and inference that actually means a conclusion from facts now in a courtroom they want the evidence they want the gun if you are convicted of killing somebody they want the murder weapon and they want video if there is video and they want the dna they want all of that if you don't have none of that guess what the case is being thrown out Okay, so I wanted to bring that out. Also, I wanted to bring out uh, Quran 436. Worship Allah and associate nothing with him. And to parents, do good. And to relatives, orphans, the needy, the near neighbor, the neighbor far away, the companion at your side, the traveler, and those whom your right hand possess. Indeed. Allah does not like those who are self-deluding and boastful. That means arrogant. So in the Quran is telling you to remember the poor, the needy, and the widow. Now I'm going to read something that one man, okay, he left a comment on my video. And what he left, it made sense. I'm going to read it. He said, the New Testament is largely written by Paul. 
Jesus and Paul taught differently about the route to heaven. Jesus taught to feed the hungry and take care of the poor. Taught us to sell all we own, follow him, and take care of the poor. Paul, on the other hand, okay, taught that we get to heaven by belief in Jesus and his grace, okay? That's going into justifying the wicked. James, okay, the just, okay, the one whom Paul was in an argument about because Paul was coming against circumcision. And that's when James was like, oh, man, this brother tripping. Okay, it was a, it was a sharp contention about circumcision. Now, James the just was Jesus' brother who became the head of the church of Jerusalem while Paul taught the Gentiles they could become Jewish without circumcision and without following Jewish law. That caused friction between James and Paul that Paul would be led to be the apostle to the Gentiles. And since he was a Roman citizen, Constantine at the council of Nicaea and others agreed on what was to become the canon we have today. Roman Catholicism ruled until Martin Luther nailed a list of grievances toward the church on the church doors and Protestantism was birthed at that time. So here we have someone in the comments keeping it real, telling you that the way that Jesus taught in the way that Paul taught was different. Now, Jesus taught to remember the poor. That's what we just read in the Quran. It literally tells you to do good to your parents, to your relatives, to the orphans, to the needy, to the near neighbor, okay? And those that are far away, to the companion at your side, the traveler, and those who your right hand possesses. That's going into your slaves, okay? Because slaves were lawful. Jesus is teaching to remember the poor. Paul was teaching different. Now I'm going to get these scriptures real quick, all right? And this is going to be Luke 6, 20. This is the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 20. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Yours is the kingdom of God. He was talking to the poor Jesus. Okay, now I want you to get Luke 4, 18. This is the reason why I say Jesus didn't follow after Christianity. He didn't follow after Judaism. He followed after Islam. Now let's get that. This is the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Okay, so Jesus came on the scene, and he said, This scripture right here is fulfilled in your ears. He didn't go to Isaiah and say, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. He never quoted Isaiah 53. He never did. Okay? So that's what I want. I want scripture validation. John the Baptist is written of in Isaiah 40, and Jesus confirmed it. He said John the Baptist is spoken of in Isaiah chapter 40. He said nothing about your boy, Paul. He said nothing about Paul. Now, I want someone to get Luke 14, 13. This is the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 13. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind. And thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee. For thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Okay, so he was talking about the resurrection of the just. Wasn't Jesus just? Okay, so there is a last day of resurrection. Okay, we call it the last day. Now, the apostle Paul, he jumped the gun. He started preaching about Jesus being 
resurrected already. Okay? But Jesus is talking about being resurrected later. Paul talked about Jesus being the first fruits, being resurrected after three days, okay? But here we have Jesus talking about the righteous being resurrected all together, okay? So going back to the point, we have three scriptures, okay, in Luke, and there's more of Jesus talking about remembering the poor. Now, I want to go to another comment. There was a comment made, <laughs> and it literally made this woman mad, and it was about Christianity. We had a person say, it's a cult of control, pure fiction. Wow, that is deep. Anybody knows what the word fiction means? Not real. Not real. So the crucifixion was a crucifixion. And we had this girl, she literally got mad when he made that comment. And he's telling you the truth. From the Christian church to the Israelite camps, all they want to do is control you. They want to control you. They want to force Christianity on you. They want to make you believe that Jesus is in Isaiah 53, even though his name is not even in there. Instead of keeping it real, saying, you know what? Jesus' name ain't in there, but this is how we believe, you know. That would be more acceptable than you lying on God and saying something he didn't say. Now, I want to take a break. I want to take a break, and I want to honor my wife. My wife has no issue with me preaching every day, all the time. I am preaching, I am preaching, I am sharing the videos, making them, always preaching, always studying, and my wife gives me no issues, never once, and I was looking around my house, and I remember a gift that I wanted to give to her at the right time, and I don't know of any better gift than I can give her. And I just want to tell her publicly that I love you and I appreciate you being there for me. All right. We going on nine years and we have a great relationship and we have awesome children who are in the real truth. OK, and I wanted to give you this gift. Oh, this is your gift. Aww. That is yours. OK, I gave you your own first copy of the Quran. OK, I wanted to give you something at the right time. And it is a book of truth. And I wanted to give it to you. And I pray that you are blessed to receive that and to not take lightly of the revelation coming from God. OK, just like we just read. All the Christians have is assumption. And that's how I knew that Jesus wasn't dead. With the types and shadows was cool. But that is the actual revelation that tells me Jesus, peace be upon him, was not dead. I want you to have that. That's yours. Okay, baby? Thank you. The prophet Mohammed, peace and blessings be upon him, told us 
that we ought to be the kindest to our wives. And I want you to have that. We are almost wrapping it up. We are almost wrapping it up. And after we wrap it up, I just want to announce the next topic we are about to go into. The topic we are about to go into is going to be the dress code. The dress code for men and women. There's a lot of confusion in the church as well as these Israelite camps on the dress code. And I am going to try my best to bring on my uncle crazy, my crazy uncle, okay, and put him on and let him give his take on the dress code of the woman, okay? And I am going to try to get him on. Hopefully he comes on um, at least just for at least like five to ten minutes. That would be suffice, okay? So that's what we're going to go into, all right? So now it's time for us to get in these scriptures. Y'all ready yet? Yes. yes. All right. All right.